Welcome. My name is Dr. Cesar Sanchez, a second year internal medicine resident at Northeast Georgia Medical Center. Thank you for the opportunity to present our clinical vignette to the 2021 American College of Physicians Georgia Chapter Virtual Resident Poster Competition. I'll be presenting our case, Maroidy Species Induced Cellulitis with Septic Shock Following Exposure to Dog Saliva. This case was put together by Dr. Riyad Arube, an attendant hospitalist at Northeast Georgia Medical Center, and myself. Maroides is a bacterial genus of the Flavobacteriaceae family that is found in contaminated water and soil. It is a very uncommon clinical isolate with less than 60 cases reported in the medical literature during the last decade. Maroides species infection occurs mostly in immunocompromised patients and have variant manifestations including self-tissue infection and bacteremia with severe sepsis. We present the case of an elderly woman who presents it with septic shock secondary to multi-drug resistant neuroides infection that was contracted through exposure to dog saliva. The patient is an 84-year-old female with history of bilateral leg cellulitis, congestive heart failure, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease treated with steroid inhaler and atrial fibrillation who presented to the hospital with bilateral lower leg redness, pain, and swelling. As you can see in figure one, this picture illustrates the edema and erythema with numerous amount of blisters. Her symptoms had started one week prior to emergency department presentation. She had worsened her cellulitis and blister on both lower extremities. Her vital signs on admission were unstable, pertinent for hypotension, tachycardia, and tachypnea. Labs on admission were notable for acute kidney injury, leukocytosis at 15,900 cells per cubic millimeter, and lactic acidosis at 9.5 milliequivalent per liter. Blood cultures were collected, and the patient was started on vancomycin and cefepime. The patient remained hypotensive and unresponsive to fluids. She was subsequently transferred to the intensive care unit for further management of septic shock with acute kidney injury. Norepinephrine infusion was started. Blood cultures grew gram-negative bacteria that were later identified as Maroides species. The patient recalled that her dog had licked her leg wounds within the past two weeks, which could have served as a source of contact with contaminated soil. Due to the possible multidrug-resistant maroides infection, cefepime was switched to meropenem. The patient's condition improved, as noted in Figure 2. Her erythema and swelling drastically had improved, and the blisters had resolved. We were able to wean the patient off vasopressor, and she was transferred to the medical floor. She was eventually discharged on oral levofloxacin based on antimicrobial susceptibility testing. Maroidy species infections are rarely reported. There have been around 60 cases reported since 1978, with more than half of the cases reported in the past decade. Most of the cases acquired through self-tissue transmission. Animal transmission has been even more rarely reported. Currently, only two case reports noted. Maroidy species are usually resistant to multiple antibiotics. However, the mechanism of resistance remains unknown. Previous documented infection reported variable susceptibility to beta-lactin and carbapenems. In conclusion, the case highlighted the rare Maroidy species leading to septic shock. The infections have presented more commonly over the past decade. Our patient was at increased risk due to underlying immunosuppression and environmental exposure through dog saliva. Physicians should suspect myroidus cellulitis in the following cases. Elderly immunocompromised individuals, exposure to contaminated water and soil, recent animal contact, and lack of response from routine antibiotic treatment. When a patient presented with bilateral lower extremity cellulitis, early introduction of antibiotics with gram-negative coverage is important. Broad-spectrum antibiotics with carbapenem or fluoroquinolones would be preferred and should be considered. Ultimately, improved microbial isolation techniques and rapid antibiotic susceptibility would help prevent septic shock and shorten length of hospital stay. On the bottom right side of this slide, you can see the references I used for my poster. This concludes my presentation. Thank you.